Sharp Game here. Welcome to another episode coming at you from ChooseYourRelationships.com. How do you make friends with Japanese people? Now, a couple days, somebody asked me that. And, you know, I was talking about some of my um, history and past experiences in Japan. And I never really talk about it. But if you've been following me for a while, you know that I, I'm ex-Navy. I stayed in, I live in Japan for a couple years. And someone asked me, I mean, they kind of, I guess they're a little homesick. And they're struggling being away from home. And they asked me, what's the fastest way to make friends with Japanese people? Mainly women. And, you know, when I, when I went over there, I, you know, I was kind of a, uh, I was kind of, I had a hard time when I first went to Japan because I didn't understand the language. I didn't understand the culture. I didn't even know where Japan was located in the world. I just didn't know, you know, because I'd never been out of the country before. That, that was my first time going out of the country. So I didn't know what to expect. I kind of made the a bad situation worse. But uh, eventually, you know, it, you know, I made the best out of it after uh, about, what, two years. It took, it took me a long time to really get used to being over there, you know. It took me about a year and a half or two to really understand the culture, the language. And, and you know, because there's always a, a kind of a language barrier, you know, you have to overcome that you have to um what i had to do i had to anticipate what they was going to say what japanese people was going to say and do at times because english is a very complicated language and everything's within context and what 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 i learned is a lot of people that's not in the western world they understand the grammar better than us but they don't understand the context so, so that's where the language barrier comes in at and I think it's gonna probably always be a language barrier anyone that's in the in the con from the continent of Asia regardless of how well they speak English their context and uh, the slang words and phrases they, they have a hard time with that because speaking slang is not really um English really it's kind of like a different dialect D depending on where you live just like if you live down south it's like a different dialect and if you live up north it's like a different dialect and and even if you're in the south or north it's within those areas it's people still talk differently like for example if you're in New York City someone from Brooklyn talk different than, than someone that's from Manhattan or from the Bronx so it's so that's why English is so complicated for a lot of people that especially if English is not their first language <clears throat> so uh, the easiest way to make the easiest way I made friends in Japan is um I started the um I started to hang out with Japanese people and I, I started finding things that we could do together. Things that uh, we, we could both relate to or, and learn from each other. So, you know, I'm a, I, like, I like sports. You know, I like looking at football. You know, I've I'm, I'm always been an active guy for the most part. So, you know, and I like going out. I used to go out a lot. I like, I used to drink a lot. I used to um, hang around women a lot. I mean, I still do that. But, you know, back then, you know, I used to go out places, uh, take tours. And a lot of Japanese people like taking tours. They like uh, sightseeing. They like doing that stuff. So that's how I got to meet a lot of Japanese people. Because, you know, I, I like having a good time. And I just... Try to find things that we could do together, 
trying to find places that we could go together. And a lot of people will say, well, you know what? I don't speak Japanese. So how do I communicate with somebody that doesn't speak English? Because English is my first language. But you know what? There's the people that I used to hang with were bilingual. So they spoke English and Japanese because a lot of them went to college in the States. So that's how they learn English. And believe it or not, they teach English in the schools in Japan. But for some reason, people just don't just don't remember to, to speak English. You know, I don't know how it works, you know, but I guess if it's one thing if they say if you, if you don't use it, you lose it. But they actually speak, teach English in the Japanese school system. But people just can't speak English that well. I mean, there's a lot, don't get me wrong, if you're in the Tokyo area, or Yokohama, or Yakuska areas, people, a lot of people speak English. But if, if you're in a smaller area, small town, you're not going to find too many people that speak English out there. However, my experience has taught me that if you understand Japanese, but you, you might not be able to speak a lot of Japanese, that's enough just to get by. You know, because I don't speak fluent Japanese because I never had to. I, I never had a reason to. I mean, I'm not going to work a corporate job or I'm not going to work a, for a company in Japan or I'm not going to work for a company in America that's Japanese with clients that's coming in that's Japanese. So I never had a reason to learn how to speak. I mean, if I did, of course I would. It would probably be easier for me being that I've I've been traveling in Japan over the past 20 years, back and forth. But if you're not working a, a, for a Japanese company, working with Japanese clients, there's no need to really learn how to speak fluent Japanese. I mean, you can learn just enough to get by. That's cool in the gang if you really want to do that. But, hey, you know, just I didn't do it. I didn't feel the need to do it. So, and another thing, you, you're, you're, you have to watch your body language when you speak. Because, see, a lot of people, even I was like this at one point, my body language didn't match my verbal skills. See, see, I was saying one thing, but my body language was saying something else. See, and a lot of women, a lot of Japanese people, they pay attention to stuff like that. You know, they, I mean, I think they do it on a, I think it happens on an unconscious level. It happens automatically without even, um, without people really paying attention to it. Because, you know, everyone has kind of like a sixth sense, you know, or intuition, whatever you want to call it. We, we, uh, people give off vibes and people can tell if you're being genuine or if you're being a fake, a fraud, a phony. So, you got to pay attention to that. So, this is what I did when I first went to Japan. I just, but the main thing that I did is I, I got into activities and I started doing things that uh, a lot of Japanese people like doing and I started, you know, going out, partying, meeting women, meeting people. I got on the train, went to Tokyo, I went to the clubs, I went to the events, I went to the tourist spots, and I just started meeting people. And before you know it, you know, I had a gang of people that I could call, that I could go out and meet all the time, you know. And that's just how I did it, man. You know, it was, um, it was, uh... A little difficult in the, in the beginning, only because I didn't really understand the culture. I didn't know anything about Japanese people. But, um, you know, as they say, experience is the best teacher. So, you know, the sometimes in order to, to learn the game, you got to get in the game. So, that's what I did. So, if you like what you heard in this video, subscribe to my channel. Check out my blog, ChooseYourRelationships.com. Until next time, Sharp Game is out. Peace.